is Bet Stars and Stripes with Dr. Turf, Ed Wyatt, and Alice Gander. Welcome to a Bet Stars and Stripes, all part of 1116 SEN at Melbourne's home of sport. Thanks to betstar.com.au. Take on betstar at betstar.com.au to be joined by our, by our esteemed panel with one substitution uh, for tonight. But we'll welcome them off the top. Uh, Dr. Turf, Turfy, uh, nice to have you in again. Thank you very much, Dash. Yes, uh, great day of sport today, wasn't it? A bit yeah, of cricket absolutely. and uh, watched a bit of college footy and uh, I saw... Um, I saw Oregon, who I think are going to end up uh, ranked number one, are they not? I believe so. But, um, a first for them. Good to, good to actually get a day's cricket in too, which was obviously very encouraging. We welcome uh, Al Iskander from Betstar as well. Al, uh, good evening. Thanks, Darren. Uh, it's great to be here. It's been a, it's been a big week, no doubt. But uh, oh, I don't know, there was something happening at Flemington. <laughs> I don't know. I, every time I drove past, there was a lot of traffic. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> i tell you what, it was very nice walking out of there last night about half past six. They can see you next year. Oh, was <laughs> <it> <laughs> <laughs> I just went out. That was my problem. I went out afterwards, and I've just felt uh, I felt second rate. I felt a bit dusty yeah. all day. Most most punters left a bit behind at Flemington. Did I you reckon, do that? Yeah, like I lost. Um, I uh, without being a smart Alec, I uh, usually. Uh, win on the carnivals, but uh, no, I've I've backed a couple of winners, but I couldn't get any exotics home. Yep. It was a bad cash swing last week. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Doc, uh, we've also got Teo Palazzeri sitting in for Ed White, who's back in London for the second time in this show's uh, campaign. Why uh, wouldn't he have gone last week when there was a game of uh, footy on over there? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, he's uh, travelling the world again. But, Teo, uh, nice to have you in. Yeah, great to be back, Darren. Looking forward to uh, spending the evening here on Sports Overdrive and kicking it off with all the American sports on Bet Stars and Stripes. Uh, we'll also be joined in about 15 minutes by Nathan Chapman. Of course, uh, some would remember him for playing 76 AFL games. Really? Others will remember him for his uh, stint with the Green Bay Packers. Did you know he was part of the trade that got Brad Scott from Hawthorne to Brisbane? I wasn't aware wasn't of that. He, he was. Yeah. Mm. He was. He was a bear as opposed to a lion, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was a bear and then uh, a bear and then a hawk. I think played most of his footy at the Bears, but uh, went across to the United States. Now runs a a punting and place kicking academy here in Australia called Pro Kick Australia. Uh, mm. I think Scott Harding went through that academy. Uh, it's obviously now as a, a wide receiver over in the states, which is an interesting path for an Aussie to go to in the United States, but we'll be checking in with him as well. We'll be going through all of the uh, all of the games coming up, but uh, also some NBA discussion and the like, but uh, we've had one Thursday night game where the Colts smashed the Jags 27-10, to 10. and one thing I noted, um, there was a lot of discussion around Andrew Luck, obviously had a pass intercepted, but then laid a massive tackle almost immediately after, he which doesn't did. often happen, no. so... He did, and uh, rushed a couple of t- uh, touchdowns as well, Teo. He, uh, he had certainly had a great impact on that game, and uh, we'll talk about Jacksonville in a minute, but uh, mm. they're going along pretty nicely, the Colts. Oh, they sure are, the Colts, and it was interesting. During the game, he actually overtook his father, Oliver Luck, who was an NFL player for both touchdowns and yards. So it's taken him one season for the uh, the son to emulate the father, and Oliver Luck was in the NFL for three seasons, I think, so his son, uh, showing why he's the number one pick. And, yeah, the Colts are in the mix for the playoffs because the, the consensus is that the AFC wildcard race is going to be wide open yep. all the way to the very end, as a opposed to the NFC, where there are a couple more dominant teams starting to get away at the top of their division. So Colts fans who would have put up with a, a pretty awful season last year with Curtis Painter and Dan Orlovsky as their two quarterbacks, those are distant memories now. Yeah, well, you get number one pick and he's as good as he, as his uh, ranking. Um, it, uh, can't they turn it around quickly in the NFL? Well, one of the underrated things is because they're spending more time in offense on the field, their defence is not getting as fatigued, not yeah. spending as much time defending. So yeah. they've improved on both sides of the ball purely because they're not spending as much time of the game defending now. Uh, one, sorry, Al, one thing I wanted to talk about also with uh, Jacksonville, because we, we both mentioned it, the, the fans, just like fans in AFL footy, they bailed, and they bailed early. I mean, there were empty stands there for most of the second half. That's not a good look. No, it, it, this team's been talked about with its ownership changes, one that could potentially get relocated to Los Angeles. The NFL isn't crying out for a team there, but it is the second biggest TV market. So if if the fans were going to vote with their feet, unfortunately Thursday night was saying, if this is what you're putting out, you may as well go. I don't know if you guys think it's a, a similar statement or whether it's maybe a, a cry to make a big trade or just do something about this team. Well, 1-8 and, and at home to Indianapolis, they were gone after a quarter. 
They were shot. And and their their touchdown was in junk time, so really yeah. it was twenty seven to three. Yeah, it was, yeah. And then they got a, a, a token score at the end of the game. Yeah. So what are the what are the fans over there think? So there was much made. I was watching Sports Center one night this week and must must have been Friday night or something, but uh, they were talking about Andrew Luck and the and his tackle. Um and it's obviously very taboo mm-hmm. for the quarterback to try and do these kind of things and the coaching staff are probably anti it. Uh, as Australian sports fans, I know we love it. Like mm-hmm. we love the where sports people mm-hmm. don't feel as though they're too precious to get their hands dirty. Mm-hmm. Are the U.S. sports fans like that? Are they sitting there thinking, good on your luck? You know, it's, you got in there, you got your hands dirty. Are they thinking, dude, we're paying you 20 million bucks a year. Just stay away from this. <laughs> the, the problem is if he separates his shoulder. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That, yeah. That's a, <laughs> it's the injury risk. A hundreds of millions dollar asset that could go down in, in one tackle because <laughs> so, the, so he, like, he doesn't that. train to tackle. What so, were the Colts last year? Two and 14. 14. Yep. So they're six and three? Uh, Five and six and three. Yeah. So six and three. So it gives you some idea of the importance of Andrew Luck. No, no, so I agree with that. So I understand all the logic behind it. I understand how precious he is. But at that moment when you're watching sport, you're not that contrived. It's, it's an emotional game where, where your roar and your instincts take over. I'm just wondering if that was played at home, would the, would the crowd be ooing and ahhing, thinking, oh, geez, just stay away from that? Or would they be on their feet saying, that's our quarterback. Have a look at him. What a legend. <laughs> it's like the, the things that perhaps Australian sports fans don't quite relate to. Now, I, don't confess to being an NFL expert, but I remember watching the Super Bowl last year where uh, the Giants took the opportunity to score early, and there was a lot of people saying, oh, what are you doing? That's crazy. And I was sitting there thinking, you've taken the lead with a minute to go. Now, surely that's priority number one, mm. because the opposition's still got to make something of their play. They've still got to score, which they didn't do. I would have thought, if you run the risk of not crossing the line when they cross the line, then you're flirting with danger a little bit. And my, my instinct would have been score, take the lead, score, take the well, lead. The, uh, it is, Tara, the, the arrogance of the quarterback in a way. And I mean, I mean calling him arrogant in a positive sense. Mm. It was like Eli Manning about three weeks ago when they were behind uh, and he just ran the clock down. He never called a timeout. He just ran the clock down knowing he was going to uh, get the touchdown. I guess... As far as Luck's concerned, he's set the tone. All the players in the dressing room now will go back and think, well, gee, it is my job to tackle. If our QB is doing that, then he's setting the standard for the rest of the room. And and you talk about that arrogance, Doc. The the QB has to be charismatic. He has to be the most important leader in the team. And the fact that he got up uninjured will do wonders. If he'd got up injured, then, yeah, everyone on the Colts coaching staff and Luck himself would be getting killed right now. and in one of the, and in one of the post game interviews, one of the players, I can't remember who it was, it, it, it eludes me, but one of the post uh, post interviews was saying, if he's going in, exactly what you were saying, Tara, if he's going in there for the tackle, we've all got to go in there for the tackle. So he clearly he set the benchmark and he set the tone for the team. It's clearly a positive. Well, we Australians love our one in all in sports, though. <laughs> I think it, we we do follow sports where everyone's responsibility is to do everything. Even if you're a bowler, you have to bat. AFL players can play any role. Soccer players, other than the goalie, play any role. Whereas America, they love specialisation. It is all about doing one thing and doing it well. And the concept of an all-rounder pretty much went out with Bruce Jenner when he won the uh, the heptathlon. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, should get off TV full stop, that bloke. Around the Colts as well. We know the uh, the situation with uh, Chuck Pagano battling uh, leukaemia and the entire team shaved their heads uh, for the game as well. It was a, uh, a very nice gesture towards their coach. We've got a couple of grabs of, uh, of the, the coach uh, delivering an inspirational speech after their uh, win over the Dolphins. Here's a couple of things that Chuck had to say. That I'm living. See, two more daughters... <laughs> Get married, dance at their weddings, mm-hmm. and then hoist that Lombardi several times. Yeah. But you refuse to live in circumstances when you decided consciously as a team and as a family to live in a vision. Yes, sir. And that's why you bring things home like you brought home today. Mm-hmm. That's why you're already champions and will on your way. Bit of spirit, it's, obviously, yeah. around the team. Yeah. So. That's the amazing thing about mm. team sport is I don't yep. care if it's NFL and I don't care if it's um, if it's AFL or in, in lower levels. That's the amazing thing about team sport is that through adversity, it really brings a team together and that support network that you get. It's just it's unrivaled. I would think uh, you know when they all turn up with their head shaved. Oh, I mean, mm. that w- must have been must have been pretty teary. I reckon in <laughs> the in the rooms there. That was uh, yeah, great stuff and. Uh, they're going along well, the Colts. They are going along very well in, in what we talked about this uh, the last couple of weeks. It, it's the most open NFL season I can remember. 
It's just up for grabs. It, it makes you, you wonder, though, what have the Colts done with their coaching setup that New Orleans can lose their coach, <laughs> assistant passed. coach, and, and have collapsed, but Indianapolis have lost their coach, yeah. and their assistant coach is no, stepping right. in and performed. No, you're right. I was thinking, thinking that uh, the other night, because they are rabble at the moment, uh, the Saints. What about the uh, what about the race for Rookie of the Year, guys? Uh, thoughts on that? We've obviously got we've discussed Andrew Luck in depth up until now, and the, and the Colts. What about uh, how do we compare him to Robert Griffith the Third? I, I think at the beginning of the season, I reckon the press was leaning towards RG three. Well, he got yeah. off to the better start, RG three. Yeah. But Luck's been fantastic. The last couple of weeks, he's just been outstanding. I yeah. mean, the confidence of taking the ball, sticking it under your arm, and uh, rushing for a touchdown twice in the one game. That's good stuff. Yep. The thing that hurts Griffin is that Washington's win loss is probably only going to get worse from here. They're three and six now. They might win five. They might win six at mm. best. And, and it's a bit like Cam Newton and Andy Dalton last year. Cam Newton was putting up insane numbers for a terrible team, and Andy Dalton was just solid. But by the end of the season, his team was pushing for a wild card and almost in the playoffs. So if Luck gets the Colts into the playoffs, I don't see how he can't win. But Griffin, you're right, is probably the most exciting player in the NFL. Why is Cam Newton struggling this year? <clears throat> It's a sophomore slump, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's what they. It's well, a million dollar well, question well, for him. What is yeah. this sophomore slump? I mean, it's just a phrase that. Well, it's like second year blues. Yeah, that's, I understand what it is, but it's yeah. just like it's it's turned into reality again. I, I guess he got to beat Griffin last week, though, and the the Panthers have had a lot of close losses. So yeah, I'm I tipping think, them this week. By I'm the looking way. at their points differential right now, and Carolina are only 31 points down for the season, even though they're two and two six. And six, yeah. Uh, I reckon they have a big chance this week. I think they have got Denver, haven't they? Or. I think they're at, they're at Denver, and I think they've got a big hype. But anyway, we'll talk about uh, the betting side of things a little bit later on how we can uh, dismantle uh, BetStar. <laughs> <laughs> and what about uh, what about D- uh, Doug Martin from Tampa Bay? Are we thinking he's a chance? He's in this race for the uh, the Rookie of the Year. Well, he he broke. <laughs> he's got over a thousand yards in two weeks, <laughs> and four four touchdowns. He had the for the fantasy players out there the fourth best fantasy game of all time. And he he had three rushes three rushes beyond forty yards and uh, three over forty all went for touchdowns which is mm. phenomenal. We don't quite get the fan. I mean, I know fantasy or or dream team and super coaches getting bigger and bigger, but it is monstrous fantasy footy, isn't it? So much so that when the ESPN did the thirty for thirty, mm. one of those documentaries and what a sensational series that is and that was. One of those documentaries was on how fantasy footy was created. And how none of the people that invented it are millionaires. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> what a tragedy. <laughs> just, it's like the guy that, you know, bailed out of Apple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like... Bad luck. Agreed. The, the, but, but I mean, it's even on, it's even on Sports Center and stuff. Like when you're watching them late at night. Yeah. So before I go to bed, I flick on Sports Center and sort of watch that for half an hour and puts me to sleep. But they're always talking about fantasy footy. They're talking about how it's panned out, what's going on. It's like, it's, it's just, it's big business. I think one of the keys is that there are so many cities in the United States that don't have a team to root for that you root for your own team. The, mm. and, and that's how they, it can transcend the fact that you so, might live in a part of the country with no pro team, but you still have your fantasy team and can take interest across every game going on. Trouble is, your fantasy team can't ever play in the postseason, so what is the point? And a lot of work. I reckon a lot of these fantasy games, they're not just sort of like you know, like a quick pick. You just walk in there, it takes 10 minutes, and then you walk <laughs> oh, out. Oh, like, oh, she got a mate, and maybe some of our listeners might uh, have some feedback here, but I've got a mate who has... You know, he's not a young bloke. He's in his 50s, and he's got involved in Supercoach in the AFL and believes it makes him a better AFL gambler. Wow. In that he, he, he's so much more aware of the lesser lights from all the teams. It's actually improved yeah. his knowledge of the Makes game. Sense. And yeah. Don't underestimate how big fantasy is because gambling is illegal in so many states in, in America. America it's actually yeah. crossed over. You can now bet on fantasy footy. You can bet on head-to-head dream team players and yeah. these sorts do of you? things. So. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. You can um, bet on points. and yeah. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty if I ever yeah. start doing that, just somebody <laughs> <laughs> kick me out there. Tijuana, for God's sake. Doc, wanted to ask just before we leave Doug Martin, do you, do you know what his nickname is? Aston? They are calling him the Muscle Hamster because he's a little ball of muscle like a big... <laughs> muscly hamster, but the Tampa Bay Bucks account during the week tweeted out that Doug doesn't actually like his nickname and wants to change it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no sure way for a nickname yeah, to stick. To stick yeah, you can tell everyone on a Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, are, we are going to take a break. After this, we'll be running our uh, competition as well as uh, for our Game Pass, which is either NFL or NBA. And I want to talk to Al when we come mm-hmm. back. Uh, we, we need to 